perception well in by that i mean if you have the right perception according to the plan and the will of god you will realize that every day is an is a day of opportunities and i'm not saying that opportunities are out there i'm saying that opportunities are inside you you see it doesn't matter where you are there are opportunities the issue is not about the opportunities that are present the issue is about the eyes to see those opportunities around you this is what happened in the old testament when elisha was able to see the angels that surrounded them and uh, his servant couldn't see them so he was so scared by the enemy those who attacked them and he could only he could only see what is wrong the attackers what was going wrong around them instead of seeing the angels that surrounded them in numbers in numerous numbers that are even more many than those who attacked them and that's always the fact you are surrounded by glory we as you are surrounded by god but you know seeing it is the issue and i'm saying also that in this verse in the in that in that scripture you you realize that how, how many people are able to see what is there on their side what they have what they possess what is has been given to them i mean what what is present so it is possible not to see what pre, what is present while it is and it is easier to complain over and over again whereas what you're complaining about is is not fun founded the, the the your points your arguments are not are not found founded on anything relevant but you continue to do that because you cannot see that is what i'm saying it's not about what is even around us it's the ability to see that which is around us that's how i pray for you in the name of jesus that you'll be able to see it when you are able to see you will see that oh this is where god has put me now whereas everybody else is complaining you'll be able to see what is being given to you see god is so wonderful god loves us so much he loves us so much and so that is why the prayer of the apostle paul in ephesians chapter 1 he said i pray for you so that the eyes of your understanding may be illuminated and that's my prayer always why because understanding what jesus christ has done for us with us when he came on the earth and understanding the results of the blessings that followed the work of jesus christ or what the results of what he did realize that maybe in fact the biggest problem or obstacle is the ability the inability to see what has happened so that is why i pray for you in the name of jesus well we are studying in romans chapter 8 verse 26 and i'm going to read using another version called philips it says the spirit of god not only maintains this hope within us but helps us in our present limitations well i think this is very brief and uh, straight to the point the spirit of god not only maintains this hope within us what is the hope that the spirit of god maintains the hope of the redemption of our bodies i want you to be able to see what's the purpose of the holy spirit being in us it's not a, it's not to help us feel good it's not there to help us feel good i'm telling you at times we fail to understand why the spirit of god is in us has not come to make us feel good i'm telling you or use him to do this or do that so that we may scare the world and so on and so forth no there are some 
Yes, that can be done by the Holy Spirit, but there's this ultimate purpose. If he doesn't bring us to that uh, redemption of the body, the experience of the redemption of the body, which is immortality, then you might say that he has failed, but he's not going to fail. You see, one of the problems is that at times we don't even realize why the, whole, why the Holy Spirit is in us. And we want to give him the mission instead of allowing him to tell us the mission. I mean, show us how to go about this. And that's why it's important for you to know the truth. It's important for you to know the gospel. Because the moment you don't know the gospel, it will be so hard for the Holy Spirit to guide you. Even when he tries to guide, you won't understand. But imagine if you now realize that why Jesus, what, why did Jesus come? You have understood why Christ Jesus is, has died, why he rose from the dead, what, is, what was supposed to be the, the outcome. And so looking into it, you realize, well, if Jesus Christ defeated death, we're supposed to experience immortality today. Why is it that we're not having these experiences? You realize it's because of our ignorance. Oh, there are things we don't understand. We don't get it. And then we, re we see that the Holy Spirit has come to enable us to unveil all these mysteries so that we may be able to catch them and walk in them. And finally, come to that ultimate purpose, which is the redemption of, that, of our bodies, which will bring the end of this, which will bring us to the end of this, of this age. Well, you, you then begin to focus and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you in that direction. And you won't be so hardened. You will yield to him. And you will know that you are not alone who's moving towards there. I mean, in terms of experience, I'm talking about knowing the gospel will help the Holy Spirit to guide you. You even know and understand why the Holy Spirit is there. So you won't be able to, you won't be um, <clears throat> wasting your time on unnecessary things or even be hardened um, to allow the Holy Spirit guide you. Rather, you appreciate his presence in you and you begin to cooperate and move together. And the, 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 the more we become, um, we yield to him, the faster we move. You see, the, the more we yield to the Holy Spirit, the faster we move towards uh, the grand plan or purpose of God. Not only for our lives as individuals, but as a corporate body of Christ. Glory to God. Glory to his holy name forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So that's what he's saying. The Spirit of God not only maintains this hope within us. So without the Holy Spirit, we cannot have this, this hope in us. The hope of the experience of the redemption of the body, this, this, this will be a, a, a wish probably, but it won't be a reality. So he maintains this hope within us, but helps us in our present limitations. So while the Holy Spirit maintains this hope in our hearts, he also helps in our present limitations, those, that's the meaning of infirmities. Every present limitation, glory to God, we have the helper. The Holy Spirit is the helper. He want to help us. He want to help you every day, every day. So that instead of uh, having excuses, you know, presenting excuses every day, you rather have a reason to bless the name of the Lord, jubilating, shouting glory to Him, praising His holy name forever, and move faster. You see, when we are complaining, when we are conscious of our limitations, we are giving ourselves a reason not to move forward. We are making ourselves stagnant. We are not helping ourselves at all. 
But when we do acknowledge that in all our limitations whatsoever, the Holy Spirit is present to help us, oh glory, we know that there is no limitation at all. The mentality, the consciousness of of uh, the possibilities, unlimited possibilities, is built in us, and that's what is is needed as we move towards the experience of our redemption of our bodies. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So every frailty, frailties of our flesh. The Holy Spirit in a seed for us. Guess what? Through us. You know, the word he does, he does in the seed, the intercession, making intercession does not mean he does it aside and do it for us somewhere, somewhere in the corner. No. The intercession is impossible without us. So he does it for us, you know, but through us. Yes, he does it for us, through us. And that's the beauty of this intercession. So the Holy Spirit is not doing it somewhere in heavenly, in heavenly somewhere. No, remember he dwells in you. So if he does it, he does it through you. Of course, he says that these words of the Spirit cannot be put into words. Cannot the the cannot shape cannot be shaped into words, see. But he does it through us. Glory to God. Who does it? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Glory to God. So when he does it with for us, through us, you know, is remember the experience of um immortality the experience of the redemption of our bodies will be is supposed to be our portion it is not the holy spirit who needs it we are the ones who needs it therefore he does it for us through us so that he may bring us into that experience if he does it out of us we will not have this experience but when he does it through us is to help us, you know, experience this. It is to bring us into the experience because his yearning is to get us into this, is to get us into this. So many times people are busy doing nothing. Ignorance is killing them, not knowing the purpose of God will not help us, will not allow us to easily yield to the Holy Spirit so that we may move faster. So we delay, we suffer for nothing, and so on and so forth. But the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives will change everything if we acknowledge that that's the purpose and the plan of God. Shalom, shalom. I want to remind you to subscribe on Church of Life Randa and also share this gospel with